privilegio para nosotros poder conversar con vos. Bienvenido, dirás, hoy acá. Y te quiero empezar ya con una pregunta. Para los que no, te, no conocen Shazam y no te conocen, ¿podrías contarnos la historia de Shazam en un minuto o menos? Gracias, Steffi. Un minuto o menos, I'll try. So Shazam was started in the year 2000. Uh, originally, there were four of us. We wanted to be entrepreneurs. Three MBAs, Chris, Philippe, and myself, and our chief scientist, Avery. We had to invent an algorithm which would allow users to identify any music from their mobile phone. And amazingly, we were able to do that. After that, when we launched, we realized that the internet bubble had burst, and we had many years of really difficult times, and many times we were on the edge of bankruptcy. In 2007, the iPhone launched, and in 2008, the App Store, and Shazam became an app. And then suddenly, everything changed for us, and people were using our little service all over the world. In 2018, we sold the business to Apple, and that's hopefully got in one minute or less. Tal cual. Justito cumpliste con el un minuto. Y ahora quiero hacerte otra pregunta. Eh, la verdad que este 2020 fue un año complicado. ¿Cuáles son tus predicciones? In 2020, um, I think, uh, has been a nightmare, but uh, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty for 2021, and it's something which I've been thinking we need to design for uncertainty. Too often, uh, human beings want the comfort of the familiar, uh, looking for the new normal, and I don't think that's going to come back. I think uh, both individuals and businesses need to be prepared for dealing with the, the uncertainty of, of the years ahead. But I'm really optimistic now that we'll have a new generation of, of businesses, new ideas which have come out from the lessons learned in this pandemic. And then we'll be creating business models which are fit for the future, for the next decade ahead, not the decade which is behind us now. Gracias, Irash. Y mencionaste que crees en el poder de los jóvenes. ¿Por qué? Ah, uh, the power of young people. Um, after Shazam, uh, uh, we had hired a, a full management team, and I left to uh, join Save the Children. I wanted to do something which which gave back, and that's where I learned about the power of young people really about the, the, the vision, the ambition, uh, and then the hard work that, that it takes to, to change the world. Today, what I do uh, now that uh, we've finished the, the adventure with Shazam is uh, I invest in startup companies which are using technology to have a positive impact on society. So companies which combine uh, a profit motive with a purpose and having a, a, a making a positive difference. So I believe in the, in the power of young people because I see a whole generation of entrepreneurs, Generation Z, who are innovating, who are creating new businesses, who are making substantial difference and, and impact all over the world, but using this new uh, thinking and new perspectives. We've seen, uh, I think, that come to light this year with the Black Lives Movement, for instance, Black Lives Matter, uh, as well as uh, a range of uh, social issues which have really been highlighted by this generation. And, uh, and I believe that young people will continue to play a major role in making global differences in the years ahead. Gracias, Tiraj. Y también queremos saber quién o quiénes te inspiran. No, I've been really inspired over the last couple of years by, by two young women. Uh, the first one, I had the incredible opportunity to hear Malala speak. And uh, I went along with my, my daughter, Tanya, who's 13 at, at the time. And it was unbelievable to hear uh, Malala's story about this young woman who found herself in a situation which was not of her own choosing. And her father helped her to find the strength and to stand up for what she what she believed in and it was an incredibly powerful message uh, one doesn't have to you know be privileged one doesn't have to have power in one's hands one can shape one's own destiny and that message came through really strongly from that talk uh, the other person i found uh, incredibly inspiring is is greta thunberg last year and to be able to change for 
uh, the whole planet uh, a sense of consciousness about what's happening with the environment almost single-handedly is a remarkable achievement. And I'll just speak for myself. I feel so much more strongly and passionate about climate change and uh, the issues which Greta has brought to the forefront. I think we'll look back on, on that legacy and we'll reflect on the fact that it wasn't uh, politicians and prime ministers and powerful people. It was individuals who stood up and, and made their voice heard. And that's what I, I guess, carry with me as well, which is we don't know who that next change maker will be. But it doesn't matter, you know, who you are, what your circumstances, you know, which country you're from, anyone can actually make a global difference through the power of their convictions. So those are the two uh, people who've really inspired me over the last couple of years. Qué buenos ejemplos y es súper gratificante ver cómo personas tan jóvenes como, como Malala y como Greta son referentes para personas con tanta trayectoria como vos. Y nosotros también queremos que nuestros jóvenes puedan ser líderes. ¿Cuáles son tus recomendaciones? One message for the young people of Paraguay is uh, to look ahead to uh, creating uh, the businesses and, and services, which I think we will take for granted in the future. To give an example, um, as an entrepreneur, I, I've seen wave after wave of businesses which took advantage of the internet, for instance, or of the mobile phone. Today, what, what I see is a new generation of, of businesses. And what I mean is uh, serving customers who uh, can be anywhere in the world. So not moving from a traditional business to a, a digital business, but starting off life uh, as pure digital, being able to access markets anywhere in the world. When we started Shazam in the year 2000, it was just a, a local business and it took us, oh, it took us 10 years before Shazam was used a billion times around the world. Um, the next billion took only a year and the billion after that took only two months. And the reason for that was the iPhone became a global pa a platform. Today's entrepreneurs uh, in Paraguay and in other parts of the world can address a global market right from, from day one. And I think what has happened is that uh, we've, we've crossed the tipping point in, in many ways in, in 2020. And what I'd love to see is uh, businesses which value people's uh, privacy, their ability to uh, work from anywhere in the world, to be productive, and also to take into account their, their wellness, their mental health, uh, their physical health, their overall well-being. So that would be my message to the young people of Paraguay, which is think about uh, all the innovation which is, which is possible coming out of a terrible year like today and thinking about the, uh, the well-being of uh, an entire global uh, generation of young people. Las claves entonces son la creatividad, la digitalización, la privacidad, pero sobre todo el bienestar. Y por último, ¿nos darías alguna recomendación sobre cómo podemos transformar Paraguay en un país más innovador? Sure. I think that uh, one of the keys to creativity or innovation is being able to see the world from different perspectives. So what I like to do is to put myself in the shoes of my, my children and see the world through their eyes and understand what are the issues which matter to them. What do they take for granted? What bothers them? What do they find entertaining? And that gives me some tremendous insights into what's going to happen in the future. Uh, to give you an example, I see all around me uh, young people really looking for alternatives to, to meat and animal protein. And I think that our, our consumption and our behavior is going to change dramatically. It's also really useful to be able to look at what's happening in other countries and other industries and to be able to take time to use one's imagination. So if you are uh, going to work and you have a narrow perspective and you're focused on what you're trying to achieve for next week, it's difficult to come up with creative uh, ideas and innovation. Innovation is about taking a step back, thinking from a customer's perspective, thinking from um, a, a stakeholder's perspective, and then looking at the world through, through different eyes. So that would be my, my advice. Mm -hmm.